remember this. Yeah, so I made a sword versus arrow video back in late 2015, I believe. And there was one thing that bothered me about it, namely, it was a pretty puny bow in terms of draw weight, only 45 pounds, which is fine for recreational target shooting and hunting small game, I suppose. But for combat purposes, you know, as a weapon on the battlefield or who knows what, that's not a whole lot. You would want at least a 60 pound draw bow and a lot of bows on the battlefield were 80 pounds and up, 100, 150, things like that. So I wanted to redo that challenge, but kick it up a notch. This is a crossbow with a draw weight of 350 pounds, which sounds insane, but it's equivalent to roughly an 80 pound bow, maybe. So it seems appropriate for a test to figure out how difficult it might be to defend yourself with just a sword if somebody's trying to shoot you. I remembered a suitable area for doing this, which is a piece of public land where there are usually no people, with a hill that serves as a backstop so the bolts don't go off who knows where. We set up at a distance of 10 meters, or roughly 10 yards. Um, the terrain didn't really allow for any more than that. I would have liked to try a further distance because the closer it is, the harder it is, of course. I think the original test was about 15 meters, something like that. Either way, so uh, I made some padded bolts, which I attached pieces of lead to in order to make the weight more realistic. On the larger one, I actually overshot. It ended up heavier than the heaviest bolt I have right now with a pretty solid bodkin point. The other one is more reasonable. It definitely falls within the range of different weights that I have. The larger one is going to fly more slowly, but hit harder, at least that's what it feels like. Basically, it has more momentum and less kinetic energy, while the lighter one has more velocity, thereby more kinetic energy, but less momentum. And because I'm a professional dumbass, I decided the first thing I wanted to try was if I can catch the bolt in mid-flight. You can guess how that turned out. Oh, I almost got it, but um, it was closer than I expected. You're too slow. The thing is, I might have gotten it eventually if I'd kept trying, but there was definitely some injury potential. I figured let's uh, move on to the sword. In the original video, I used a longsword and a Dusak reproduction. The latter was rather clunky. This time I used a lighter, more nimble sword, this Messer here, a Dorian by Landsknecht Emporium, which I've also reviewed, in case you haven't seen it, that's linked downstairs as well. So timing is difficult. With a considerable draw weight, the bolt comes zipping at you at quite some speed. So at first I tried to react to it. No countdown, I didn't know when the shot would break. So all I could go by is the sound. There's going to be a little bit of a delay. And then of course, whatever reaction time you have is going to make you fall a little bit behind. So personally, I could not do that. Somebody else very well might. I got close though, and there was an issue that we didn't realize at the time, which is that the shots were going pretty far left. Might have to use the other one. This one is flying all over the place. It's tumbling and it's just a mess. And that one also went too high. The idea was to aim slightly off to my right side. So if I mess it up, I don't constantly get hit by high powered bolts. But as it turns out, the prod on the crossbow wasn't perfectly aligned. So it was shooting left. In other words, every shot went quite a bit further left than intended and also higher than intended. So eventually I figured out we need to correct this and bring the shot closer to me. And here's a bit of relationship advice. Marry somebody who is willing to shoot directly at you with a crossbow when you ask for it. Yeah, I know you don't want to hurt me, but the thing is, if it's too far away, I have no chance of getting it, even if it's the right timing. Jokes aside, mutual trust is essential for a good relationship. 
Anyway, there were a couple of attempts in between that the cameras didn't get, I think three, because that day was an absolute mess. Not only was it brutally hot, it's disgustingly hot and humid and I have to cover up because otherwise the sun burns me to a crisp. There were also constant technical malfunctions, which I had less and less patience to deal with. Three, two, one. It stops recording over and over again for some reason. Ah, uh, no. Yep. Nothing f***ing works today. Nothing. <sighs> I hate those days. I despise them. Yeah, this is definitely a three-person job. I didn't realize it, but it is. Three, two, one. But um, it did work out in the end. Three, two, one. Yes! Fuck! I got it! So that was with a countdown. Even with the countdown, it was pretty difficult to figure out when the bolt would be within reach. Now, in one way, it would be easier if the shooter was further away, because then you have more time to react to it. But the further they're away, the harder it is to see the bolt, because it gets smaller and smaller, right? And I find there's an ideal way to try to deflect the bolt or arrow, which is not to cut into it straight like this, which is what you would expect, right? You just beat it aside like that. But if you do it like this, particularly if it's a fairly forward-oriented cut, there is a pretty limited window in which the, uh, the bolt or arrow and the blade intersect. Whereas if you do it like this, with a false edge cut, or it could also be a true edge cut, this is sort of like a windshield wiper action. Right, so now you cover more of yourself as opposed to this. You can see if I face the camera and I cut straight forward, you see I'm not covering all that much of myself, right? Whereas this way, I cover significantly more, whether this way or that way. And this step, by the way, I find pretty important because um, if you don't catch it, but you sidestep, then you still have a chance. Because in the original video, I also found it easier to dodge than to beat it out of the air. The smaller padded bolt worked out a lot better, even though it flew faster and is thereby harder, but it didn't tumble uncontrollably the way the big one did. No wonder the balance and aerodynamics of that misshapen lump were terrible. Is the trope of hitting arrows out of the air realistic? I would say yes. I mean, I do not have great reaction time and reflexes personally, like about average, maybe something like that. And I was at least able to do it with a countdown. So somebody who has much better reaction time and is faster in general would, I think, manage even without a countdown. Um, there's a certain failure rate, yes, but Definitely a character with peak human or even slightly above human abilities would absolutely be able to do this. All right, so if getting shot at with a crossbow isn't enough to get some engagement out of you folks, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. What you're supposed to do is tell me what you think and uh, maybe buy my merch if you like this shirt. Link below. Thanks for watching and take care folks. Don't get shot.